Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of, I don't even know what I'm calling this. I don't even have an introduction. I don't have anything, but uh, welcome to whatever this is. And you will have to excuse that my life feels about as messy as my hair is right now. So we are just going with the flow. Today I wanted to answer a question that I get very often, at least once a day about strength and conditioning resources. Now there are so many books on the market, so I understand why this is a thing. The most common questions I get are, can you recommend me a book that will make me get faster? Teach me how to write a training plan. Teach me how to get stronger. Teach me how to coach a team. Well, not really because there's no one book that will do all of those things. So I'm here to give you some resources that you could go to if you want to learn about the science behind speed, the science behind strength, and what it takes to program all those things together to make a complete athlete and a better human. Of course, these books are not the only thing that you can use, uh, and I don't get anything out of this. This is an advertisement. This is just my personal opinion as a strength and conditioning specialist and the books that I go to regularly for reference. I would also like to make a note that you can read as much as you want, but if you never ever practice, you'll never ever learn. You can learn a lot up here. You can learn a lot of facts. Semantic knowledge is a thing, but if you never actually put it into practice, you're losing a lot and you're never actually learning it in the practice. So yes, these books are awesome, but they won't give you everything you need to know because experience is simply invaluable. The first book is Old Glory, the old classic. Some of you may have lived in this book. This is The Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning, and this is pretty much the alpha and omega of strength and conditioning and sports science for strength and conditioning coaches. That is because it has everything in it. <laughs> it has a reference to pretty much everything. So I'll read you some of the contents. Structure and function of body systems. We've got biomechanics, bioenergetics, hormones, anaerobic, anaerobic training, age and sex related differences, psychology, nutrition, nutrition, more <laughs> nutrition, doping, administration, sports management, assessments, technique, program design, warm up, flexibility, plyometrics, strength, speed, aerobic endurance, periodization, rehab, reconditioning, facility design, and again, more sports management stuff and legal things. This has a reference to everything. So if you're looking for a great go-to resource for everything that will give you ideas about everything, this is it. But keep in mind that this is a textbook. This is very sports science based. So if you're not looking for that, this is probably not the book for you. Another one that I recommend very, very often because it's less sports science-y but still helpful is Periodization Training for Sport. Now this is a great book because it's the closest you'll ever get to have somebody teach you how to write a training's plan. There's foundations of strength training, there's program design, and then there's periodization. And the great thing about this book, it's easy to understand. So in here, they give you an idea about periodizing the training plan, about how to write one. So if you're a basketball player and you wanna learn how to write a, a program for basketball, they give you an idea here about the annual training plan. And then you can go in and look up, okay, AA, what does that mean that I'm supposed to be doing in July? Okay, it means anatomical adaption. I'm gonna go find the chapter that's about anatomical adaption and you can kind of learn it from there. It also has chapters all about, as I said, the energy systems, how to program the entire year, which I appreciate. Nutrition, recovery, load management principles, uh, micro cycles, doing smaller cycles. This is a really great book to have reference. If you're an athlete and you're just looking for trying to expand your sports science knowledge, I would definitely start here. Back to a little bit more sports science. This is a great book by Fergus Connolly. I use this as a reference very regularly because it is holistic. The game, the player, the preparation, and the coach. Those are the four sections, but there's like group psychology, there's player principles, the team sport athlete, the human athlete, so it's not just the science of building better athletes, of building better teams. It's how all of that works together and it also addresses the human very clearly. So I really enjoyed this book. If you're looking for a step beyond essentials of strength and conditioning, this is a great book. It's not exercise specific, right? It's not about programming. It's more general than that. It's got a lot of data, but a lot of really cool graphs as well. Like this graph, for example. I love a good graph. I'm an aesthetics hoe. Back to a little bit less sport science-y is new functional training for sport. This is practically a book about exercise selection. It also has things about program design. So you've got making training more functional, assessing strength, designing a program, warming up, lower body, core, upper body training, plyometrics, and Olympic lifting, sports enhancement. It's a really great resource that I go to regularly. It also has an online video library, I believe, so you can get access to that. All right, speed. I get asked a lot about speed. So one of my top speed books is here. What we need is speed. Uh, Krajinov is also an icon of the speed field, and this is a very to the point book. Basics of sprint training, profiling or assessing an athlete, the phases of sprinting, technique, strength training for speed, team sports, 
planning and periodizing, general specific transfer, recovery, etc. But this is a very sprinter based book, which I like because it gets straight to the science and straight to the practice of sprinting. And then we can take it from there and implement it into team sport. But it takes a little bit of know how to transfer this to the pitch or this to the gym or wherever you're using it. Brett Bartholomew's Conscious Coaching. This is a great resource. The psychosocial aspects of coaching. So for any of you coaches out there, I do recommend it. I think everybody should read it at least once and it's a good one to have in your library. And I recommend and hand this one out. It's a little bit uh, torn up. So those are my resources. It's not exclusive, but those are the main ones that I go to. I touch each one of those probably once a week and I find them extremely helpful. And I think you guys will too. They're also quite accessible, especially new functional training for sport and periodization for sport for athletes who just want to learn something. You don't have to be a scientist to figure it out. Sometimes you just don't want to read a book that's all jargon, right? I get it. All right. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week.